Hello and thank you very much for joining us on Hope TV where you look and live and on Testify where our faith keeps growing. I am Sharon Aitore Wanganye and last week we began a conversation with one evangelist Susan Atieno and she just you know was sharing with us the story of her life and what God has you know pulled her from and uh, the processes that God has taken her through um, being brought up by a single mother and then you know uh, getting married to a wanted robber and you know just so many other things that you will just hear in in a snippet welcome back uh, evangelist evangelist susan we're glad to have you and we give god the glory for what he's doing through you and using you all right so just uh, last time we left it at where you know your 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 husband now is dead and uh, you have had to move from where you were staying back to the slums and now your friends offer you know to help you uh, get a way of making money and so they introduce you to prostitution wow <laughs> let's just start from right there wow thank you so much for having me mm. yeah we left it at um, now my husband is dead and um, life has to go on and I need to get something that I need to do and uh, who do I consult the people that I hang around with yeah and uh, so what option do they give me they give me option of becoming a prostitute and because I was in their need I didn't uh, really hesitate I didn't know the Lord uh, I'm raised in, in the slums I had gone through a lot so bring it on, whatever I need to do to survive, then I will not choose. So, excuse me. Sorry. So now I'm introduced to prostitution by now this friend of mine. And uh, the first night I got myself money that I was able to pay my house rent. I was able to um, buy my children food. And I thought, I can do this for the time being and I, as I really go through the process and see what I really can do to be able to have a comfortable life and raise my children. It's, so this very first night, uh, well, you're still living in the slums, yeah? Yes. Yes, so mm -hmm. you're raising money to pay rent mm -hmm. for that house in the yes. slum. Yeah. How much money did you get? You say you were able to pay rent <laughs> and buy your, your, your children food. They usually say when you go to gamble, when, when the first day you go gambling, like now today we have people who are doing betting and all that. Mm. During my time I, I also gambled. And the first time that you introduced to gambling, they usually say that the house favors you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're favored, it's like uh, that spirit that controls that. Yeah. It, will, it will favor you that very day first day so that you can continue you oh. can see the reason to go back yeah so that very night i got myself ten thousand shillings wow and that time it was a lot sure and i was like oh not bad if at all i can pay my house rent i'm able to do shopping for my children and i have change pocket change then this one i can do as i think of maybe starting a business you know yeah. it is not bad so it's like i was I was favored that night. Mm -hmm. I was the real thing that very night. And this gave me morale to go back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I found myself now going and uh, getting money and uh, really feeling I'm, I'm home because when you have something in your pocket and you're not going to ask anybody, mm -hmm. you, you really feel there's that feeling that you usually feel at the end of the month when you have your check. Yeah, yeah there's, there's that warmth yeah. that you receive, there's that comfort. Yeah, so long as the landlord is not knocking at the door to ask you for money mm. and your children are not crying, especially as a woman, when your children go hungry, you can do anything, you know. Uh, that really gave me confidence, but I was not there. I was not going to, to be there for long. 
I had my goal and my goal was maybe to get married, maybe to a white man or somebody who is very rich because that is, you know, many times the lie mm -hmm. that many girls who are in the streets do believe in. Even right now that I'm reaching out to the street women, uh, most of the times they, they will tell you, uh, I'm doing this hoping to save enough money and start myself a business or I'm doing this so that I can get married to somebody. Mm -hmm. They have they usually have two options. But um, eventually that is not the case because mm -hmm. every time you go, the enemy is very tricky and very cunning. He will really attract you, he'll bring you clothes and uh, he brings you clothes with goodies. So it's like I was given goodies at that very particular time. I was not has I, I was not harassed it's like the environment was very good for me, and I thought, why not? So I continued, and uh, now in continuation, this is not a normal thing that I've gotten myself into. It's a, a, a business that is involving your body. And the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So I found myself every night really drinking. Mm -hmm. I used to really drink. Before I get home, I could take some few stuff, so that now I could go and become bold enough even to, to talk to my clients. Because mm -hmm. when you're in that business, it is, it is not that you go sit and then you think somebody will come. There's you, a lot of girls. Yeah. So it is also hard work. <laughs> <laughs> People think it's easy. Yeah. It, is, uh, it is also very hard work. You have some convincing to do. You, you have to be a very good marketer. Yeah. And I do believe every girl who goes to the streets, they have an ability to be either to become uh, very good marketers or very good business people or very powerful evangelists. Mm -hmm. Like you are now. Like I am. <laughs> Amen. And so the enemy twists that to get them do that. Yeah. Because for you to get a man to come to you, you really have to really convince that man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Convincing by the way you dress, and even by you, the way you speak, you know, to them. Yeah. Because there's a lot of competition. So I got myself drinking and uh, <laughs> it is the work that you don't rest even one day. I had to go out every night. The enemy used me properly. Yeah. There's no holiday. And there's no day that you have to say, today I'm off, I've gotten enough. Even if you got 100,000, mm -hmm. the enemy will tell you, go. There's 200,000 waiting for you. So you're never, you're never at rest. Yeah. You're always on your toes going. So along the way I became frustrated because now I'm becoming of age. And there's some other young girls that are coming. And in the industry of prostitution, uh, the younger you are, the marketable you, you, you are. Mm -hmm. So when you become of age, you lose market. So when you become of age, you don't know what to do next. Because now, the client maybe that you had last time, he does not want you this time. Yeah. He wants that girl who came yesterday. So frustrations started coming in because now the money that I used to get is not coming in. And um, I used to pray. <laughs> you know? You used to pray? I used to pray. Yes, I remember I used to pray. Yeah, when I started, I used to, to, to call upon this unknown God to me. And I used to, t to tell him, any time before I left house, I used to tell him, God, please protect, protect me. You know, I'm going to do this because of my children. Don't allow me to get, to, 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 to get hooked with a madman who will, who will kill me because many of my friends were killed. Oh. You know, don't allow somebody to come and affect me, affect me with HIV and AIDS. Don't allow anybody to harm me. And innocently, I used to talk to this unknown God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and any time I came back home safe, it does not matter how drunk I am. I, am, I knelt down <laughs> and I used to tell him, thank you, because you protected me. Now I'm back home. Wow. And any time I had money in my pocket, I've gotten my money. The way to give my offering, I used to give to the street, to the beggars along the, to the, beggars along the street. Because I didn't like church people. You, why? The church people used to <laughs> judge us. Oh. They hated us. Yeah. And every time I, wa I went, you know, I could dress up and uh, put my mini, sp mini skirt and I'm going. 
they could say now look at look at her mm -hmm. yeah, husband snatcher has gone oh. so i used to know the church people do not love us so it is okay you live with your church me let me pray to this unknown <laughs> god i never had I, I i never had any church person approach me to come and to tell, tell me that jesus, jesus loves me no. what was happening with your children so at that particular time i i took my children back to the village uh -huh. Because your I mom had moved to the village? Or? Yes, my mom had moved to the village. Okay. Yes, my mom had moved to the village. So I took my children there because I didn't want them to see what I was doing. Mm. Yeah. So anytime they came to visit me during holidays, I used to tell them I work at night in a casino. So I never, I could not even imagine at one time my children becoming like me. Mm. So I really tried to really hide it from them because I... What I went through, I would not have even imagined that my children at one time, they would go through that. Yeah. 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 Yes. So they were in the village and going to school. Yes, they were going to school in the village. So you would send money to I mom? I would send to money yeah. and I would go there. I used to go there every after one week or after two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. so, so for how long were you in, in this industry? Yes, I, I, th I, I did it for seven years. Every year hoping there's going to be a change. This was day in, day, day out. Day in, day out. It's tiring. So you it's would... It's exhausting. So you would sleep during the day and at night? I would night. sleep during the day and limited hours. Why, why so? During the day you don't sleep enough. Well, yeah. Because maybe by, by one, I'm awake. If at all I came at around six in the morning, I then prepare to go out as early as possible so that I can go and get the first couch. What, it, what, what, what would it take you to prepare? You know, cook myself food. Yeah. Yeah. You know, relax a bit. Now sleep has gone. Yeah. Now if at all I eat and then go back to sleep, I'll be late. Mm. Yeah. So just, you know, prepare. Maybe go to the salon. Because it's really, you have to really make me look sharp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to look sharp. <laughs> it's so tiring. You have to, oh, to impress. Yes. So buy new clothes every now and buy then. Buy new clothes every now and then. Going to the salon. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Getting the makeup and Getting all that. Getting the done. makeup. Yes. Oh. Yeah. For seven years, day in, day out. Day in. We didn't have holiday. I, I can't remember a day that I said, today is my resting day. Whether Christmas, New Year, whatever. Christmas, you're on toes. You're like, you don't because even want... Because that's when... You <laughs> don't even... No, you don't even want Christmas to come because everybody has gone to the, for oh, holiday. Yeah. They've gone to be with their family. Now it is not a very good time for you for, for business. So you have to work very hard <laughs> to get <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah. and of course, um, you, you, you were telling me about, you know, how, you know, now age was catching up with you. Yes. But before now we you're get getting tired. Yes. Let, let's take a short break. Mm -hmm. Then when we come back, you will tell me about, you know, some of the suggestions that were offered by your mm -hmm. friends and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Stay with us and uh, don't go away. <laughs> 